Hey everybody, welcome to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install a full RV site service panel to your RV site at home. Whether you just wanna do this as a regular 50 amp, 30 amp, or what I'm doing, which is gonna be the full RV site, which has 50, 30, and a 20, I'm gonna show you how to do it, so stay tuned. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Of course, one of the first things that you need to be doing when you're at home is figuring out what do you need? Do you need a 50 amp service, 30 amp service, or can you get away with even just adding a nice 20 amp service outside for your RV? In my case, I've gone ahead and I've added a very large RV site. My Airstream is parked way in the back side of it. It's a 30 foot Airstream. You got all this space up front plus room to the side. So I can fit a very, very large 45 to 48 foot fifth wheel back here or a big, huge motorhome. Not only am I gonna be keeping my Airstream parked here full-time around the year, uh, actually I'll be keeping it in this bay over here once it's all cleaned out, but uh, I have a friend that comes and stays with me for several months and he has a very large 50 amp uh, motor home. So we're gonna go ahead and put in that big, huge service panel that has 50, 30, and 20. So I'm set up for anyone that wants to come visit. Now down in the links below, I'm gonna have uh, a different 50 amp, a 30 amp, and the same one that I'm using here, which has the full RV site, which is a 50, 30, and 20. Uh, I'll have a link to all those down below. First things first, let's go over what parts we need. Of course, in my case, like I said, I'm doing the 50, 30, and 20 amp full RV service. I have it disassembled right now because I'm gonna be getting it prepped and for, for mounting. But if you just need a 50 amp outlet at your house, that, that all this same exact stuff is going to apply if all you need is a 50 amp. All the same stuff's gonna apply if all you need is a 30 amp. The only difference between the two is what size wire you'll need for the two. Next up, you need your wire. This is six gauge three wire, which means that there's three six gauge wires in there plus a ground. And this is technically indoor rated wire, but I'm gonna be running it all through conduit. So I'm gonna have this conduit mounted all along the wall here where the wire is gonna be running inside of this and nice and protected. Of course, you'll also want some conduit straps to make sure that your conduit stays nice and tight to the wall. And then depending on your install and how you wanna do things, you're gonna need your connectors that go from, of course, your 50 amp box to get to your conduit, uh, and also at the end of your conduit to get into your main service panel. Now, I've chosen these flexible liquid tight because it's a nice seal in there with a nice little rubber gasket. So that's gonna go in just like so right here. And then on my panel, which is gonna be mounted on the outside of that wall there, same thing, that'll go through the wall and into the back side of that panel um, for the RV site. Now, the last thing you're gonna need is a service disconnect inside your main panel. Now, for me, this is in my barn, so I have a new panel up here that is pretty bare and empty. So I've already popped in this breaker. It's a 60 amp breaker, just because I have a 50 amp, a 30 amp, and a 20 amp. Of course, none of them are gonna be used more than one at a time. The reason I'm doing a 60 amp breaker is because I'm using 6.3 wire. And that's what that breaker is gonna do, is it's gonna protect that wire from any kind of overheating. So if I have the 50 amp plugged in outside, and also I'm using the 20 amp for something, this is still gonna protect the wire at the end of the day. To start off, I'll show you, I'm gonna go ahead and take this panel off, get this down and out of the way, and show you what we got working on in here. So this is just a 60 amp breaker. And all you do whenever you're connecting your breakers is the foot, the little feet go in first at the bottom, and then you get it lined up and it just clicks right in. Right now this breaker is off, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna start by mounting my panel outside and I'm gonna start coming this way with everything. And my last thing I'll be doing is going through here and getting my connection up into my 60 amp breaker. All right, so the first thing I've done when I've unboxed this new panel is go ahead and double check my, um, everything that's wired up inside here, make sure it's all proper. So I took this panel off. Now, first thing I did was I checked to make sure all of the neutral and the hot lines were nice and tight <clears throat> and connected. 
Uh, I'm also gonna take off this bottom panel, make sure that my grounds are nice, tight, and connected. And I've checked that the wiring back here is all proper for 50, 30, and 20 amp. 50 amp has two legs of hot, a neutral, and a ground. Your 30 amp has a hot, neutral, and ground. And then of course your 20 amp has a hot, neutral, and a ground. We have a hot leg from each side, a neutral, and a ground. You have your hot, neutral, and ground. And you have a hot, neutral, and a ground. Different boxes come in different configurations. In this case, it has a bunch of knockouts at the bottom for your regular stuff. Now, what, for what I'm doing, I'm not gonna use one of those knockouts. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole in the back of the panel because basically the panel's gonna be mounted on the outside of this wall here. And I'm gonna have the electrical just go straight through the wall right into the back of the panel. All right, so I've gone ahead and mounted my box out here. I got it nice and level. I started up by just having the one screw on the hanger, and then I got four screws in the four corners. These bottom two are only going into regular sheet metal panel, um, but it's fine, it's not going anywhere. And then the top two are going into that big, huge channel of aluminum that's back there that you can see all these panels are mounted to. So this thing is nice and tight, it's not going anywhere, but that is step number one, is to get your panel, your service panel, nice and mounted, level, connected, secure, Good to go. All right, so now that I've used my step bit to go ahead and drill a hole back here, and I got my liquid tight connector all connected. I got a rubber seal both on the inside and outside because there's a gap back here. Um, that way no, no moisture, no water is gonna be able to come through this connection. I can go ahead and start on number one, getting wire fed through here and also fed through all the conduit going that way. Again, here's just a nice visual representation here is the panel back here for the RV site and it just goes through that wall and it's gonna ride all the way along back here and go into the service panel over there. All right, so now I got my wire fed through here. I have hot, hot leg one, hot leg two, neutral and my ground. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this back and get this connected. You got hot one, hot two, neutral, and then there's a little ground screw right here or you can get it connected right directly there. I'm gonna just go ahead and get it right here. Of course, be sure that when you're stripping your wire, you have the proper amount of copper exposed for the proper lug. For this case, you can see that I have the copper perfectly inside that lug there, just like over here, just right in there. That way you have maximum, maximum uh, connection inside. All right, so now with all my connections, like I said, ground, neutral, hot leg one, hot leg two, Everything's good. I'm gonna go ahead and put all this back together, which in my case has two screws going through the side and then two screws at the bottom. And then there's the front panel, which also had two screws. So what I'm working on now is getting my conduit, which is all down here. And then here's the wire remaining. Uh, I'm still got a little bit more conduit, but that's gonna to have to be cut just for this last little gap going here. But what I wanna do is go ahead and get my conduit strapped up a good portion of the way so everything's nice and straight so I could end this thing with a nice little bend in. All right, so now I have my conduit going all the way. I have my wire sticking out down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down and go ahead and get it connected to my 60 amp breaker here, which is basically just gonna be the two hots, one red, one black. Get my neutral connected to my neutral bus bar on this side and the ground connected to the ground bus bar on the other side. All right, so like I said, I got my ground to the ground bus bar. Got the neutral, ran up to the neutral bus bar, and I got my two hot legs going into my breaker here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my front panel back on, flip that breaker on, and go test power outside. All right, so to go ahead and test out my 50, 30, and 20 amp, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on all of the breakers. And do my best to do this one-handed. So like I said, our 50 amp breaker, this right here should be 240 volts. Boom, there we go. And this down here is a neutral, so that should show 120. Bam, same thing on the other side. Bam, and same thing to ground. Bam. There it was. Okay, now on our 30 amp, we have a hot and a neutral here. That should be 120. Bam, and hot and ground here. Bam, and now a neutral and ground should show nothing. Same thing here, the neutral and ground should show absolutely nothing. Now, last thing is the 20 amp breaker. Bam, there's my 120 volts. So 
we're good. All this is operating correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the Airstream in. All right, that's all there is to it. Installing a full RV electrical service panel for your at-home RV site. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bells. We'll see you next time. Bye.